Well, hello everybody, and then you're back in my garage studio, which I set up in a previous uh, episode or whatever you call it. Okay, so Blackmagic released a 6K. It shoots in RAW at 6K, which is about 21 megapixels. And I just got thinking, some clients want to pull stills from video and use it on their marketing campaigns and such. I don't feel confident in 4K, but 6K, hmm. The big question is whether this is any good or not. Do you get results at all? And my hypothesis is that it's gonna be a yes? Okay, so first off, we have to do some lab tests to see if this is even feasible to take out onto the field on a practical shoot. So I have to find out at which B-RAW setting there's a point of diminishing returns for actual resolving power. And I found out that, you know, between eight to one and five to one, you know, there's not that big of a difference when you really zoom in. So I decided, hey, let's just do eight to one. And then using A21, I compared shooting this highly detailed scene of a street, both with the A6500, which should have the same sensor size, versus the Blackmagic 6K. Of course, the Sony A has a three by two sensor, two by three, uh, versus the 16 by nine sensor of the Blackmagic. And it has 24 megapixels, making it total of three megapixels more. Now, when you crop everything together and stuff, it's, it's gonna be more like uh, 19 megapixels on the Blackmagic end. So you're looking at five megapixels less. So I expect it to be softer. And when I pop it into Lightroom, I see that resolution difference. You know, it's glaring when you zoom in, but when you zoom out, it's like, well, that's a photo. If you really need to crop in on your images, perhaps this is not the best way to shoot it. I guess for the bearing process with a video is very different from capturing stills. But I think that this kind of slightly softer look is great for lifestyle video. So that's what I think I'm gonna go test it on. So before I even start shooting, I have to figure out what my post-production workflow with these B-RAW files is. One thing I was surprised about is that you cannot pull DNG still frames from DaVinci Resolve. The only still you can export is TIFF and JPEG and all that. So if I wanted to edit in Lightroom, the workflow would be to select the frames to export in TIFF 16-bit format and then edit it in Lightroom. And then Lightroom has better controls of denoising and also sharpening specifically for photos, photo delivery. But I know that some people are gonna say, you know, just stay in Resolve and sure, all good for you, uh, but I'm doing this this way. Oh. Now, in order to make sure that you get the max resolution that you could get out of the camera, you have to make sure that your Resolve project is in 8K because there isn't like a 6K preset there. I brought the camera onto a shoot for a client that's looking mainly for stills, but we're in talks about video for their product. And so I thought to myself, let's, say, let's go ahead and just shoot the video and make sure that it's sharp enough, shutter speed is high enough in order to extrapolate stills from thing is that you know high shutter speed doesn't really play back very well at 24p unless that's the look that we want to do I decided to just shoot in 48p which needs a higher shutter speed anyway and just have uh, my talent move with the product in slow motion you know slow motion in real life and then slow motion in the camera and then you should have minimal motion blur so all this product manipulation to uh, grab stills from was a very interesting process because it's like, I'm not clicking shutters, I'm just rolling and spray and praying style. And I just sprayed out of my mouth right now. It was a little bit freeing, but at the same time, it's like I was snapping way too many images. I was like a photographer that was just holding down the button on continuous super high-speed buffer uh, capture. Also, it ate up memory space like crazy. You, you know how the Blackmagic RAW eats up a lot of space. Like 128 gigabyte card uh, at 48p at 6K, like lasts like, I don't know, seven minutes, maybe a little bit more. So if your main target is the photographs to pull from it and secondary is video, this might not be the best way to go about it. But if your primary purpose is to shoot the video and be able to extract stills from it, you know, you're gonna spend that uh, amount of storage anyway, right? right? I mean, you wanted raw, right? No, you didn't want raw? Then why are you here? It just, just, just walk away. So after editing all the images that I got from the lifestyle shoot, both indoor and outdoor, I, I have to say that I think that if you're doing internet campaigns, of uh, pulling stills and want the power of raw while shooting video, yeah, the 6K, the boom, 6K is totally viable. But you know, it is a little bit of a hack. So 
my hypothesis was that using it f to extrapolate stills is yes. Uh, and my conclusion is yes. It's more like a bonus cherry on top on top of the cake. How about you though? I, I wonder if anybody else had success with it. So please comment down below if you had success using this camera for both stills and video at the same time. Like literally you roll and then you pull the stills from the video and you deliver to a client both a video and stills. Please comment below. I want to hear your thoughts. And remember to like and subscribe because I have a fragile ego as usual and I want to hit 10,000 followers, subscribers, because I'm millennial like that. Technically, I was born in the early 80s, so I consider myself a zenial. Like I could say that I remember making mixtapes and uh, cell phones were like candy bars. <laughs>